Guess it's time to kick that music, Justin. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. You might even curse the jerk for reminding you that everything's worse in the back. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. You might even curse the jerk for reminding you that everything's worse in the back. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. You might even curse the jerk for reminding you that everything's worse in the back. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. You might even curse the jerk for reminding you that everything's worse in the back. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. You might even curse the jerk for reminding you that everything's worse in the back. From Harry Potter, or maybe it's worse. We've been here for like an hour trying, so... So I've been sitting here talking again, and yet again, I do the same thing. My mic is muted. But yeah, we have had the worst luck with Facebook Live so far. Like, honestly, if if it was uh, to come down to going back to Twitch and YouTube, I think it's going to end up coming down to it. But with Facebook Live, it's like everybody can see you. Everybody wants to see you, but on Twitch and YouTube, it's like... I don't, I don't know if they want to see us. They probably don't want to see us, but. <laughs> but I've got a good good rolling rock to match my green screen, so that way, that way, if I do green screen anything, you can't see my beer; it'll be invisible. That's right. So we, you know, we'll just replace it with pizza. So. Yeah, we'll definitely replace it with pizza. So, Justin, we have uh, we have a lot to talk about. We do have a Funko Pop of the week, uh, and we do have the comic books of the week. But the thing that we sh- we should probably talk about. Uh, E3 was was happening. We did some E3. E3 was great. What was your What was your favorite moments about E3 so far? Oh my God! Uh, PlayStation stole the Bethesda right from the get start, just like last year, stole the show for me. I mean, the Skyrim remaster that's coming, uh, Elder Scrolls Six, and of course, you know, Doom and Fallout Four getting VR as well as some new. DLC coming out is fun. PlayStation was amazing. They killed it with God of War 4. And Batman VR. I cannot wait for this. Absolutely. Like, it sold me on VR. And we're going to talk about that, too. Um, Lots of great stuff. I didn't really tune in to Nintendo's, to be honest. And what I got from Microsoft was the biggest thing is they're making a uh, Xbox One S. And they're also working on something called Project Scorpio. Oh, wow, Project Scorpio with the uh, the four million four hundred fifty two thousand teraflops processor. No, it's it's got like six teraflops in it or something. Whatever a teraflop is, it's like a, I think it's a flip flop shoe that you put on your processor. That way it can it can walk around in the sunlight without you know it'll end up with that that indention from the sunburn from the slippers. But people probably yeah. Wouldn't. What's that? What the hell is he talking about? I tune in to watch watch some dude talk about flip flops. <sighs> Xbox flip flops. It's the it, newest it, thing they're working on. Exactly. Xbox flip flops. That's where it's at. So, uh, since you're keeping the counter, has anybody commented or anybody even watching us so far? I mean, this is their first. Brandon's watching us. Hi, Brandon. Hey, Brandon. What's up, Brandon? He'll probably hear us say, hey, Brandon, in about like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> hey, what's but, up? But. So. I think it's time for that that epic Funko Pop of the Week. That's right. If you don't have a Funko Pop, then you ain't epic. So, Justin, here's what I... what I, I didn't bring nothing special. I just brought uh, Iron Spider-Man to the play, playing field. He's, he's not the coolest dude in the world, but I think he kind of... Kind of I don't know. I thought he was pretty cool. Well, was he an exclusive somewhere? He was a Walgreens exclusive. Ooh, fun! I didn't know Walgreens even sold pops. Yeah, I like like the Iron Spider Man, but eh. that was one of my favorite costumes that I I think didn't get really anywhere. That I I would have liked to have seen it again or some variation. Yeah. We did with Superior Spider Man, kind of. Yeah, but so I I think it's think it's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, if you've if you've been tuning into Ultimate Spider Man, like it makes a mockery of of all the Spider Man. Like it's just like. 
Uh, Spider-Man Web Warriors, followed by Spider-Man, and now the Sinister Six. <laughs> the Sinister Six. Uh, yeah, it's it's a terrible pile of poop. I just really hope that that Marvel reboots all of their animated series and gives us spectacular Spider-Man back, which will never happen. Speaking of Spider-Man and back to E3, we'll PS4 get there. Exclusive. We'll get there. Oh we, come on! I really want to no, talk about no, it. No, we we will get there because because Justin, we still we still have to talk about these these Funko oh Pops gosh. of the week. That's right. Oh, uh, the Dark Knight Returns. That's right. Now. I really like these Funkos because they're a set, but what what really made it interesting to me is they're all PX previews exclusives, and that makes me angry because that means <laughs> it's more searching for that crap. So, yeah. I found a few PX exclusives at a, uh, not Hot Topic, but um, what's that other music store that's in the Fayette Mall? Oh, the FYE or yeah. FYE, yeah. I find a lot of PX exclusives there, so I mean they're like eleven, twelve bucks, but hey. Okay, Have so it. so you you may go ahead and 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 spoil the evening for E3. Wait, you was about to drop one of these on us. Oh, yes, I was about to drop the. Can I say it? Yeah, go ahead and say it. Spider-Man PS4. That was the one that stole the show for me personally. Uh, Insomniac Studios. Insomniac? Yeah, they're making it. And um, they're the guys behind uh, Infamous. If you're not familiar with those games, it was like the open world uh, hero games. And it was a fantastic series where you could choose good or bad side you had electric powers and it was an open world and this looks like it's going with the similar style of open world uh gain new abilities uh save the save the uh day kind of game and it just looks great the first thought when i saw this was that's so sure. stupid <laughs> yeah exactly i'm not sure i like that suit uh well it's kind of grown on me in a few days after watching this trailer so many times, but I'm still not sold. <laughs> well, I, I think think what gets it for me is knowing that the fact that in all the Spider-Man games, they usually have a hundred different costumes, so it doesn't matter what costume he's wearing at the moment. It's not like we're not going to get like a hundred different character skins. But this suit is weird because it's a combination of anti-venom and, and Spider-Man at the same time, so I really don't understand... What? I like that they're going with a different style, though, and I like that it's not really related to any of the movies. It's its its own thing, and that's what I've always wanted with a Spider-Man game is something where they're not just giving us, like, elements of its own thing spliced with the movie. Although Spider-Man 2, the uh, Tobey Maguire game, was actually really good. I really liked that one because it, it kind of added the free roam elements – and the new characters that weren't in the movies along with the story that was like those Mysterio levels were great. Yeah. And I, I know that uh, Amazing Spider-Man games tried to uh follow suit by making it loosely based on the movie but it I don't worked know. It, I, it worked. I, I like the Amazing Spider-Man games. I didn't play Amazing Spider-Man 2. Just never got around to it because it never did drop twenty bucks like I wanted it to. So as soon as it drops twenty bucks, I'll probably pick it up digitally or you know free or whatever. Then, I'll just wait. This game will be out, so you'll be ready to play that. You'll probably be knee deep in that by then. Yeah, and hopefully it's not the, not like Shattered Dimensions or something where it's like uh basically you're pretty much guided where you need to go. Like everything's a menu. There's no open world. The open world to Spider-Man games is what makes the games good to me like i like the open world if it's anything like infamous it's going to be kind of like a guided thing with objectives on the side um you know in infamous and all the games it was like you can follow the story but there's also little side things you can do side quests and uh people to discover and things to do so you could also level yourself up so i mean i'm just really excited for this because i mean infamous second son was huge we got like the whole city of seattle and I like – you see, as far as the series goes, it wasn't the best, but it really ramped up a lot of the gameplay and the replayability because you had such a massive open world and a massive amount of abilities you could do. 
So if it's anything like that where there's a giant open world, we could potentially see almost all of New York being open to Spider-Man. Well, all of New York was opened up in Spider-Man 2. You remember that? You could, like, hitchhike to the Empire State Building as Spider-Man and stuff like that, and that's something I didn't get in Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, and I really love that, and I hope that they stick to that element, too. And, you know, maybe that I was saying that it'd be kind of cool if they had, like, a a good and a bad side, you know, kind of like what they did with uh, Infamous, because maybe if they start an origin story... Maybe Spider-Man's still kind of unknown, and you get to decide whether everyone fears Spider-Man or if he's your neighborhood-friendly Spider-Man. Which or, I mean, or he I could go that... bat, bat shit crazy and just like kill everybody. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> or maybe you, he just kills everybody, and then you find out that he's a clone of Spider-Man, and it turns into the Clone Saga. It's Spider-Man PlayStation Four Clone Saga. <laughs> See, this is my judging you guys for even <laughs> suggesting that. <laughs> Everyone hates the Clone Saga, but me. Like I'm, I'm right there with it. Now, another thing that we did notice is uh, um, the Batman VR. Like that was really interesting. Like, is it going to be like a complete remake of one of the games, or is it going to be a new story? I mean, that's something, I, something to me I, that I, had me really I interesting. Was, as soon as I saw the, uh, I heard someone say. Rocksteady announced something new for Batman, and as soon as I looked it up and saw it said Batman VR, I gasped for air. I was that excited. I was just uh, I was looking at the the video, my computer screen. I was like this. I was like, like this because like, like I've been on the fence for a long time. Like this? Were you like this? Like like this? Yes, I was like, oh my god, 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 oh my god. But uh, I've been on the fence for a long time on whether I wanted VR. And, you know, because I was like, well, it looks like they're just going to have a few hokey games that are coming out for it right when at launch. You know, kind of like when the, uh, I don't know, what, like when the Kinect came out for the Xbox 360 and you had like Dodgeball or like a fitness game and two other things like Fruit Ninja. It wasn't really like there wasn't a lot of potential for making it advance. You know, when I thought Kinect, yeah. I thought, oh, man, I'm going to be able to play Fable like hacking and slashing like that, and that's what everyone thought. Well, see when I and, seen when I seen this trailer, I was like, uh, "What is going on here?" It's like, is this going to be another Batman game? I was like, "Wasn't the last Batman game not long enough?" I mean, you, you got to admit, Arkham Knight was very short, even it, with all the DLC and everything. It was very short. And I mean, yeah, we could go around and, and hunt for Riddler uh, trophies all over the place, but. I mean, honestly, who wants to do that all day? Like, we want to see Batman get into the story and really, like, do something. Yeah, and I, I really am excited for this because, I mean, it just shows that there's a lot bigger games coming, like, companies looking to VR, which gives me a little hope and reassurance, which is why I'm probably going to uh, get VR before the end of the year when it comes out because, I mean, I was on the fence for a while. Uh, from what I've heard, there were demos at E3, none that we have seen. Um, hey, Fallout 4 this back- was announced like completely VR. Like They, they did announce that that was going to be VR, so I'm pretty excited about that. But, I mean, right I'm- now, that's going to be the HTC Vive, I think. But the fact that, yeah, the, the HTC Vive is what um, is getting VR for Fallout 4, but that also shows that it that's what they've announced it for right now. Odds are that stuff will transition to the PlayStation uh, VR very easily once they get that established. So what I want to know I think is right when, to to when are they going to exactly announce that Grand Theft Auto for the PS4 is going to go? you think it, it is even capable of doing the PlayStation VR? Because I noticed that the computers and all that stuff, the Oculus and the Vive, all need like really intensive graphic cards. And I, I kind of feel like that's where the Xbox Scorpio is going, is it's packing all this massive of power, still giving you the same P- or Xbox One games, but giving you that extra boost of power so that it can do the Oculus Rift without any problems. So I mean, see, me, I was talking, to, I was talking to someone about that, and I was saying that you know, they're like, so what? Am I gonna have to start buying? Like, is it like I'm gonna have to buy my whole collection again yeah. when the Scorpio comes out? And I said, no, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like you're going to have maybe like two copies, and there'll be you can buy 
the regular Xbox One, or you could buy the Xbox One Scorpio edition and have a better quality game. Like maybe one's a 4K and the other same game. You could go and buy the lesser one and still play it. Um, both of these consoles, I mean, PS4 Neo has been confirmed, but it's not. It wasn't announced at E3. But both of these consoles are focusing on 4K compatibility and making it so that you know vr can be compatible in the future and possibly third-party vr technology as well so i'm just really hoping that vr doesn't head down the same road that 3d has went because like i got so excited about 3d that i went out and i bought the playstation 3d monitor and i had it for like i'm you know maybe not even 20 days like maybe two weeks or two and a half weeks um, I think Drac bought it. I think uh, my dad even bought it. We all bought that TV, but it was so small, and the 3D was just... They wasn't putting enough 3D games out, and that's what I feel like VR's heading. Like, everybody's going to be wanting VR. They're going to drop four or $500 on VR, and then they're going to end up in a situation where, in about two, three years, nobody's releasing any... VR games that you want to actually play. Like, they might do it like they do the Move, or they l release enough to keep you occupied, but how much have we got Move games or Connect games since Xbox One and PlayStation 4? Like, the Connect has basically become something that nobody uses, too. I mean, it's the same as, as 3D. Like, all these fads are really expensive to get into, and you get into them, and then support for them just drops all of a sudden. Just all of a sudden, you have no support for these these things and I feel like 3D might be heading that same way like if you look at the Vita like we had some AAA titles on release I mean like they were announcing Call of Duty they had Uncharted they had uh, Killzone all that stuff for PlayStation Vita and now they you know three four years down the road they've dropped complete support for it so now we're just getting basically like side scroller games and like exported over mobile games on the PlayStation Vita and, I mean, that's that's something that's got me a little worried about VR. Like, I don't want to be the first consumer that drops $700 for something that in a year's time is basically worthless, you know? I understand that, and that's my fear going into this. And that's why I think that showing that big companies like Rocksteady and um, DICE and EA announced that they're going to work on VR for Battlefront and stuff. And, you know, Bethesda working with Doom and Fallout. It just goes to show when you have the problem with the uh, the the Connect and, like, some of those 3D things was they didn't have big companies supporting the technology. You know, you had little third-party companies that were saying, yeah, we'll take the risk. We'll take the risk to go for these VR, you know, for this um, Connect and Move stuff. And, you know, it didn't really pay off for them. And by the time that anyone had saw that people wanted this, it was already, you know, the people had just given up because no one was supporting it. So I think that with companies like DICE and EA and R Rocksteady saying, yeah, we're totally – we believe in this. We believe this is going to be the next big thing is really going to help the – VR and I mean a lot of you know video streaming services have started using VR you know they started using it for viewing capabilities I mean even just you know it could be something potentially that could mean that all I'd have to do I wouldn't even need a TV someday to play video games I could just use my VR headset if I was in another room or something like that I don't know maybe yeah, but just, the just potential's a, there I think that that's just another reason to not pay attention to anybody else around you like hey leave me alone I'm in my VR headset I don't need <laughs> to talk to you hold on I got an earphone loose yeah now well, I've completely I think... toned you out of reality get away from me and then, then somebody's standing here and you're just like uh uh, oh, did I hit you? No, no, I didn't hit you at all. I actually hit a stormtrooper. <laughs> you know that type of thing. I know. I feel like I'm gonna be the guy who's gonna get really into a game, and I'll just yeah. be like wildly just swinging start around, breaking like, stuff. Like I'll just be like playing Batman, like. Now, now there's Batman himself. So something that I really hope happens with uh, Batman VR, like Arkham VR or whatever they're gonna call it. Is that we actually get? Because they've been talking about the Oculus Rift having a full Bat Cave from Batman the Animated Series that you can walk around in and you can actually look around at stuff. That's what I hope that they do with this PlayStation Four version is that you can walk around, and interact. Right. And I think that as processing power of of consoles grows, 
I think that that's going to get just become even more prevalent. That's why these companies are making these new consoles with a better better hard drive and stuff, yeah. so they can process that. And you've VR. got the PC elitist right now just listening. And you're going, you're stupid, Justin Gabe. We've been able to do that for like months. You guys can't do sh- crap. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that there are plenty of PC elitists being able to say that. And I mean, you're right. I mean, they've yeah. been ahead with VR for a while now, and consoles are catching up, though. I mean, and it sucks because because. because if you look at it now, we should have all just went out and bought the developer kit because then we would have had two Oculus Rifts, the developer kit and the new one because they just basically said, oh, you bought the developer kit? Here's a free Oculus Rift for you. Like, they pretty much pulled an Oprah and then you've got the Vive which costs like two times the price of any other VR headset. It's like the Vive's supposed to be the bomb and then you've got the PlayStation VR, which actually went from four ninety nine to three ninety nine. So they're trying to make that affordable. But does that mean that they're making it affordable so you'll buy it and then not get supported? See, that's what I worry the most about with Sony is that they're going to release all this crap and it's not going to be supported. We're going to be screwed. The thing is, you got competition, man. I mean, doesn't uh, Microsoft's got the Oculus Rift and they're they're dropping it this year? Yeah, but. And- but I think from, that the VR is going to be the newest market that's going to drive a lot of competition to be better, and I think that'll be great because we know how Sony and Microsoft push each other to to push some boundaries. So, and I'm tell- I think I'm telling benefit. you, you know, you know me. I'm I'm one of the biggest PlayStation Sony fanboys ever. But since I've had an Xbox One, it's it's definitely grew on me because all the games that we played. I mean, we're we're huge Battlefield friends. So, I mean, we play Battlefield and we play Battlefront. I mean, we're basically EA junkies. So to be able to grab an Xbox and drop one flat rate fee for, you know, you pay the same amount for EA access that you would for a game, and then you've got an access to the whole library, you know, and a whole vault of EA games. Like, this, this week alone, I've been able to download Battlefield, Battlefield Hardline. I've been able to uh, download uh, Golf and play Battlefield 4 on that map. Like, there's an actual golf map where you can play Parcel Storm. And all this with EA Access with the Xbox One, and it's like, why did Sony pass up the opportunity to get EA Access? Because now they have a little bit of a hand over top PlayStation players. Because with EA Access, you've got you've even got Battlefield 1 going to get an early two- or three-week release before you know what else. You know what Sony has that the, P- that the Xbox doesn't? Exclusive. Style. Oh, exclusives. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say, style works, but exclusives. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, sure, you've got Halo, and, I mean, they had Titanfall, which was kind of a bust. And oh, dude, 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 dude. I mean, no, 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 no. Let's, I'm taking it back. I'm cutting you off right now, dude. No, 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 no. You can, you can go on your Titanfall rant again. We've had this rant. Uh, we'll go on it again. We are go- well, we going on this one now, all right? Listen yeah, I'm to me. Ring- look, turn over here and look at me. Look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> no, no, yes. no. Titanfall no, is the no. bomb. No, yes. Okay, Ti- well, you know what? It's no. going to be Titanfall 2 is coming to the PS4. I know. So that's not at Microsoft anymore. That's right. They, got, get- oh, they have that's, no exclusives. That's what I'm getting to, dude. That is what I'm That is what I'm striving to tell you, man. All of that... that exclusive titles and PlayStation 4 is finally getting Titanfall dude I'm telling you if you like Battlefield and you like your Overwatch and all that stuff you're going to love Titanfall because there is nothing like dropping a freaking Titan down like a big Gundam like war style it's like like Gundam suits or something you know that drop out of the sky and you could like eject yourself out of them you could go and do fist battles you could like when they shoot rockets at you you could be like stop them rockets and throw them back at people like Titanfall I'm telling you it's going to be a hell of a it's going to be a hell it is going to be one hell of a battle this October what- PS4 has exclusives and that's why it's it's you know Sony's you know whether or not Xbox did well Sony still did better. So that's the thing. Like they've got God of War, they had this Spider Man exclusive. I mean they I know that I mean, ass. Yeah, I mean we got Sony Horizon Zero Dawn ass. coming out. And I mean once the four you know, once the PlayStation Neo comes out with four K capabilities and with this PlayStation VR that's gonna be amazing and my you know, from what I've seen, it you know, with these big titles coming out 
I think that the, you know the potential is that Sony's going to give Microsoft a run for their money that they're not counting on. But and if but, Microsoft but wants to you, you wants to, to really some ass to, again, they gotta get exclusives. Listen, they shut down Fable. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut you. <laughs> if you don't give me a second, if you don't give me a second to talk, son, I'm about to. Now I've I've got to be the only person on on the on the back of, of Xbox. I've been running them into the ground for years, but what they're doing with Xbox One is a sneaky, underhanded, dirty trick that I kind of like how they're sneaking it in. Like to have to the ability to to play your Xbox One games on a PC. Now that's something monumental that I think is is something so different than just sneaking an emulator in there like people are doing with PlayStation One and PlayStation Two games. Now Xbox is kind of sneaking it under the table that you're going to throw in the ability to play not only just buy your games with Xbox, but end up getting that same game for PC too just with one purchase. Now that's monumental. That's something that, that may keep the Xbox One alive for a little bit longer. Especially not to mention that their new controller that they're re releasing with their Slim console will be finally Bluetooth enabled so you don't need that stupid dongle. Which is another thing. Why in the hell... Would I want to use a place or a, an Xbox controller over a P PS4 controller on my laptop if the PlayStation 4 controller works with Bluetooth and the Xbox doesn't? So now they're releasing a controller to kind of combat that, you know. They want Windows 10 and Xbox One will do it all at the same time. So I have to get their back. They have, they have kind of slid in there, even though their, their press conference was a little bit eh, you know. When Sony come out and they had a full orchestra, dude, I had chill bumps. Did you not have chill bumps with that? I agree. I was just, I was actually pretty surprised by that too. I was like, dang, they didn't even get like a soundtrack. They were just like full orchestra, bam. Yeah, when 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 they started that first uh, that first part out of the uh, the press conference, I thought there is something wrong here. Like there has got to be something wrong here because they started it out and people were just standing there like, uh. Uh, and I'm like, did they cut too soon? Because they had a lot of technical difficulties with the pre-show. Just just about as many difficulties as we have with this stupid Facebook Live stuff. But they managed to pull it off in a way that I thought was pretty incredible, man. Because that, that long-haired dude came out and the next thing you know, boom, they are right into an orchestra event. And I'm thinking, hmm, what could this be? What involves an orchestra? Well, of course it was God of War. Like... Of course. I think they're going in the perfect direction with God of War because people have been ta mythology. talking. Yeah, people have been talking for for years like what are you going to do now? You pretty much killed everybody, Kratos. You can't really do nothing. How about settle down like like let's take a page out of Wolverine and do old man Kratos. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is basically what they did. They've done old man Kratos. I like I like the direction they're taking. Uh I really loved that preview they showed the whole time um <laughs> i like how he was trying to control his anger so much with his son he was just like you know, you know he would like raise his voice and then just stop so it kind of shows that he has tempered himself a little is that but his son when or time, is it like an adopted like pokemon it seems wing? to me like it was like it seems to me like an adopted son like a stepson of yeah. some sort because you know he obviously asked a lot of questions like did your mother teach you this teach you this and he, you know, she. It, it was interesting, but also I love the fact that you know trolls and goblins and all that stuff yeah. aren't really like you know like the sun just blew like was just standing there while these trolls were there. He's like, you want me to help? Well, like, see, like nothing. You, you could tell this Kratos is a little withered and broken because uh, he didn't take that dude out quite as fast as he should have. And for me, it, and that's there was a moment where we're in that that little teaser video that they did. There was a moment. At the end, where I thought, "Holy shit, are they gonna p pull one of those Red Dead Redemption moments where Kratos gets his ass killed towards the end of the game, and the next thing you know, the little kid becomes the next Kratos?" Like that seems plausible for me. That seems it, like it a Red Dead Redemption move and a cheat. But we I feel like you Red know, Dead just Redemption. like with any, <laughs> just like with any. Um, any God of War game, you know, you, it is plausible, and you think you know what's going to happen at the end, but they could always throw us a curveball. This doesn't seem like it's just one installment. There's probably going to be quite, you know, at least two more in this yeah. saga. So 
we possibly could see the end of Kratos and an introduction of a new character, but I think that they're really going to have to develop that new character if we're going to move on from Kratos because I'll yeah. mourn the loss of Kratos pretty easily. <laughs> well, see, like if, if, here's the reason I could not get... I tried my best to get into the God of War games, and if they would remaster the God of War games and let me use my right analog stick to zoom around in a 360 motion, I would like it. But I wasn't into the God of War series because I didn't like the side-scrolling aspect. It felt like an old-school Super Mario Brothers side-scroller. And although it had cool visuals and a cool storyline and stuff, I was more inclined to spend my time watching the YouTube walkthroughs than I would actually playing it because I hated the thumbsticks. So the best thing for me is I'm so glad that it looks like they fixed those those camera issues so you can use the right analog stick to kind of move around in a 360. Speaking of camera issues, one of my... uh... One of my friends was uh, commenting on the E3 thing. He's like, did you notice that all of the PS4's games have the same camera angle, right, when they're trying to demo it? It's like right over third person over the right shoulder. Just that's all their angles as soon as the game starts. Horizon, Spider-Man, all that. It's just all third person. What was the other game that looked just freaking intense and insane? Um it was the one with the, all the zombies in the house and stuff, man. Like they, dude was. It looks like he was at a sawmill and he has to run around and get away. Did you remember that one? Did he have to get the um, the generators on? No, he had to get to the rooftop or something. Uh, there was like millions of zombies just crashing in or, and coming after him and stuff, and he was just like turning around like. Wah! All right, we'll skip that. Yeah, I caught one that one because you didn't catch that one, and that was the most intense one. Something about memories or old days or something like that who who oh oh i know what you're talking about um days gone by or something days gone by it's a big love of a family is it like a motorcycle (laughs) or something like that yeah yeah he started out on a motorcycle and stuff but but i actually thought that it was like i actually thought it was like a sequel to uh, last of us which i got kind of i thought i thought it was too but then when i when I watched the gameplay footage, I wasn't disappointed because I've never seen that oh, many yeah. zombies, not even in the Dead Rising. Dude, it was intense. Which kind of sucks that that PlayStation got Dead Rising 2 but didn't get Dead Rising 3, so hopefully Dead Rising 4 will just be like, nah, to you uh, Xbox and come over to PlayStation 4 land so we can play it. But I think we're done talking about E3. What do you think? No. What about Crash Bandicoot? <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. Oh, Crash love Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot <laughs> Mastered, and let's not forget Injustice 2. We've seen a lot more. Crash Bandicoot <laughs> Masturbate. Yeah, Injustice now, 2 now is did. coming out. And I'm excited. I'm really, I'm really proud you brought that up because I almost forgot. This is the comic book jerk show, as you can see up there. But you're right, man. You're right. We did not talk about Injustice, which does not impress me. I'm sorry. But hopefully well, hopefully it will, I though. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the cast so far, and I really like the leveling up system. Because the thing about it is I really love the, the what they're doing with the leveling up system. Because in the last game, Injustice was great. But after a certain point, once you've unlocked all the costumes, all the concept art, all the level art and stuff like that, you know, then you're just sitting there and it's like, congratulations, you've reached level 75. Here's nothing. <laughs> Here's you know? nothing for that. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, okay, so I've mastered this character. It's, it's not I have like... no incentive to go and master any of the others. So this one's giving me a, th- the option. And it's like, if I max out a character, then I'm like, whoa, I've maxed him out. I guess I'll try and max out the other characters and see what they're like. You know, so yeah. there's incentive to go on. It's not like and then ba- I bought- it's not like Battlefield in which all you can do is level up and you get new weapons and new unlocks and new scopes and new rifles and new stuff and everybody it's wants it. Battle- Did you see the new Battlefield trailer? Did you not sit there and watch the 45 minute gameplay with uh, with uh, Terry Crews, Zac Efron? Uh, oh, I watched. Who else was in there? Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg was in there, and then uh, Jamie Foxx was in there. Like, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Don't That's forget awesome. Neebs and yeah. Stone Sixty Four, and then everybody else was just YouTubers. And I didn't win the competition that I wanted. So, if you guys want to, here's a shameless plug from Aaron Gabbard, the comic book jerk. 
go to youtube.com backslash comic book jerk and watch the Battlefield Friends intro that I made. It seemed like, it honestly seemed like everybody that entered that, that so-called competition to join Battlefield squads got replaced by celebrities. Like, I'm really pissed off right now because you know what it feels like to me? It feels like motherfucking Zac Efron took my spot. And you know what? Jamie Foxx took my dad's spot because we Battlefield Masters. <laughs> Sir Gamblot will take your tag, Jamie Foxx. Can you be Fox. really mad, though, if they take your spot? Oh, well, you know, I freely give my spot up to, to Mr. Zac Efron. Because, you know, hey, I'm a Zac Efron fan. What can I say? <laughs> you know, work. You're all just you sitting there. We'll be playing Battlefield. You all sing. We're all in peace together. Don't know oh, what yeah. you're talking about, but it sounds like High School Shit. Musical. Okay. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> but Anyways. it's time to kick it off with comics of the week. We got yes. some new new comics of the week here, Justin. So go ahead and and get ready. Go ahead and get your comics ready there and. All right, so what, let's start so, with the new. So we're we're basically basically what we'll probably end up doing is just skipping a lot of the Marvel because since the whole Captain America Hell Hydra stuff, I've been kind of dropping out of Marvel, and I haven't read any of the new Civil War, but I will be sticking with the Steve Rogers Captain America because I'm actually interested in the Captain America's Hydra thing. I but still really, read right it, man. now. My, uh, my heart and soul is into Rebirth right now. Like, like for example, Titans Rebirth that just came out. And it is an amazing... It was great. I know a lot of comic stores didn't have it. They sold out. I know a lot of people didn't. Uh, a, lot of a lot of the Rebirth is sold out. Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, those comics sold out. First printings. I know some first printings are going online for like quadruple what they were purchased for. So, I mean, they had to do a total reprint because they're just so popular. But uh, Titans Rebirth was really good. I really loved the uh, the bringing it back with the Teen Titans kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Wally West being back is so great. And it's just – it goes back to the whole we've ta – you know, time has been lost, 10 years gone. And I just think it's so cool that they're tying in – pre-Flashpoint with this kind of event, basically making New 52 like one of the largest tie-ins ever. Thanks, Brandon, for that awesome say statement. I used that from you. Uh, but yeah. No, I, I just, you know, I stole that from him cause he, because he made a great analogy. I mean, this really is like one of the best tie, like a 10-year tie-in. Alright, now um, you, you know you know the Titans is my thing and Wally West has been the thing that I've been most excited about, man. So, so for me, the most exciting, exciting experience I've had so far was was uh, this this whole whole thing right here, dude. Where where Wally West was was finally like getting to reach Nightwing and stuff, dude. That was something to me that I thought was just freaking incredible. It's like I have no signal here, but yeah, here we go. Yeah, this was my favorite favorite moment so far, dude. And it wasn't even even that. It was the fact. Of this, this heart one, like this gave me just as much chill bumps as as the Flash rebirth, basically because it was just something that that was meant to happen that should have happened a long time ago, man. And it gets even more deeper than that. I just think it's really, you know, how I wonder. I mean, Wally's realized that in order for people to remember him, he has to just touch them, and then suddenly it's like they just get these these memories back, and they it's like they're their old selves again, you know. And I I really like that. Yeah, but uh, they only get a partial memory. Like they get like just a random memory that does doesn't really kind of make but it's much something sense. Mean, but it's something random that may mean something to them, or also it just reminds them like, hey. We had a life before, and now we're trying to investigate this. Like, what, what took this from us? You know. Yeah, like Lil, uh, especially man. She had she had one of those moments where it was just kind of like crazy, like that too. Yeah, and uh, I thought this was a great. It was really cool seeing the photo in the beginning that didn't have him in that picture. And then by the end of it, he's back, which just shows that the timeline's changing. But uh, one of the spoiler biggest spoiler alert. You well, think that you think sorry. that means you think that means that that the timeline's changing? 
I think that it's meaning that some events of the timeline are changing for sure. Like I, um, didn't, I didn't really get that the timeline had changed from that. I just kind of figured that it was like, hey, their their eyes opened up and they seen the the image of the page, and I was like, oh, it finally makes some freaking sense now, you know. And then he was always on there, but maybe their vision was kind of blocking it out. Unlike probably, yeah. unlike the the old school Marty McFly routine where it's like, hey, I went back in time and made out with my mother and now I'm not born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, or like no. where he runs over a tree yeah. and then three pines bluffs becomes two pines pines yeah. bluff or now if you, if you want to see see a good time travel and twist movie, I'll go ahead and plug it right now. The best one I've seen so far is the James Franco Hulu original um, written by Stephen King, which was basically the same date that JFK was shot, dude. Now, that is – got some Fantastic. Time. I've read yeah. the book, and I actually subscribed to Hulu just so I could watch that show. And then I found out I kind of like Hulu, so, I mean, yeah. that works. Yeah. It, yeah. It, Hulu's better if you drop a couple extra bones and you get rid of all the commercials. But since they got yeah. rid of Kevin Smith's spoilers, I don't really, really like them too much. Yeah. What's what's next on the list, Justin? Uh, we're gonna go to Superman, which um, I really, you know, Superman's one of those runs. Superman in action comics. I've never been a big Superman fan, so I mean, it's like every time I read this these rebirths so far, I'm like, well, this will probably be the one where I just uh, give up on reading it and I'm just gonna drop it from my pull list. And then as soon as I get to the end, I'm like, well. Now I definitely got to read next week's, you know. So I mean, it's really been it's oh, been dude, not this so this good. issue of Superman had me at the heartstrings. Like, and Superman is not the comic that really grabs my heart. Most of the <laughs> <laughs> Superman is not that comic to do that to you, man. I, I don't care. You could have Doomsday beat Superman's brains out over and over, and I'd still be like, "Eh, Superman got his brains beat out." Oh well, but. For me, there was a moment in there that was so heartwarming, and I know you know which which thing that I'm thinking about there, and it's not even to do with Superman. For me, it this story is more about Superman's kid, who I was like, this is just another cash in. Like Batman's got a son, so Superman's got to have one too, and they have to form the Justice League, and it's gonna gonna be like the future is gonna be them in the Justice League, and I, gonna gonna be I, basically them as a Teen Titans now on. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it kind of felt like to me, but one of the most most powerful scenes for me, man, had to be. I really do like this. I think that. Uh uh-oh, Justin Gad has become the faceless man. Oh, you're you're getting getting a little clearer, sir. Where am I? Where? I'm like zoom, just really blurry. You're just moving so fast, dude. We can't see you, dude. It's just like me, man. It's like, it's like I'm Barry Allen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I really like... This You're one back. was definitely not as much Superman, but more about his son. But I think it really did great because I, I've had a few questions about his son, you know. Does he have powers? You know, I, I haven't really followed Superman, to be honest. So this was kind of... You know, for anyone like me who's just really starting to get back into comics... Rebirth is a great launch point, and it's really been yeah. well written to where I can, um, I can rem- you know uh, can't follow along and you know not be too lost and feel like I need to go back really far. But I mean, I mean, if if, if you look on. at it from this aspect, dude, the most heartbreaking moment. You know what I'm talking about? Look at me for a second. Look at me. Did it make you cry? I, I had emotions. I had a lot of emotions, and uh, I did not see that coming. I was like, no. Uh-oh. No, Goldie. <laughs> yeah, Goldie. Poor Goldie, man. I'm telling you, dude. That was heartbreaking, dude. Yeah. But it also just shows how unstable his powers really are. I mean, that was well, just crazy. It also shows how you should go and buy this comic right now, dude. Like, it's one of those issues. It's just like, yeah. You gotta sell out and sell out and sell out of this comic. Now, if you don't hurry up and buy it now, you're gonna end up on like the fifth printing. You're gonna be like, <laughs> yeah. But like I said, with all the, uh, 
uh, Mike says uh, they need to bring back Superdog. <laughs> yes, we want crypto next. They just killed off Goldie just so they could make room for crypto. Uh, do we That's have any, exactly what they just did. Speaking of which, do we have any comments on the on the Facebook board right now? Is anybody actually uh, watching? Uh, Mike, Brandon, Ivan. Uh, Mike's the only one commenting. I mean, you guys are welcome to like. Come, if you're watching, feel free to comment and stuff. I got this right by my side, so I can see who's talking and you know ask some questions. Maybe bring up some things that you're excited for too. Tag along with the conversation. We love to have you. So this is That's something right. new we're trying, and I re I really like it being you know live so that people can participate just as much. Yeah, because you bastards won't watch it on Twitch, so we have to put it on Facebook Live in order to get you to I watch. will tell you what to do, Brandon. I'm on this show, alright? I can ask nicely. What What are you asking nicely? I mean, it's your show, too. This is the comic book jerk show, <laughs> but it is the Justin Gay cosplay kids show right at the moment, so go ahead and do whatever you want. Well, I am going to go on from Superman... And we're going to move on to Batman. This cover is one of the variant covers that I got, and it is sex. It is all the sex. You is can't it, see it very well in this. It is beautiful. So, yeah, you it, got an image right there. Is it sexy? It looks sexy. I don't know. It looks, it looks kind of like like a sketch art, man. I like I don't know. I you know, I the costumes look like the animated series to me, man, and it really? just looks so yeah, I mean, like you which got, like, animated the, series? Like, like the the Funimation one, or or not like the Funimation, no, like, but like, the, the, the Hanna Barbera yeah, like Batman? No, no, I'm talking about <laughs> no, the nineties one. What Look I at, wanted, what I want to know right here is why is uh um why is Captain America's villain in this, dude? The Red Skull is right there getting held by Batman. Like, I don't, I don't understand <laughs> that, dude. And Scarecrow, like, is, do we have a new Scarecrow going on? Because I'm not following it. Cause that scarecrow looks like a, like Lady Gaga, like his. No, why is Batman fighting the Red Skull and Lady Gaga? <laughs> do you do you not see know. it? Do you, do you not see it? Like honestly, I, I know you. I know you see it. <laughs> I see. I, I I can see it. I guess I just want to know why Mister Freeze looks like he's uh in a giant pill bottle. So. Oh, dude, he's he's on drugs, man. You you can't get past. Tim Sales is actually Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brandon. So yeah, Superman and Batman were some of my favorites um, this week, but I I definitely think that Green Lanterns, which we're going to talk about, was actually really one of my other favorites this week too, just because of some of the things they're doing right now that I really like. So so uh, but so they got rid of. Let's Green go to Batman. You want to go back let's to, go to Batman? Batman? Yeah, let's talk about Batman because I just talked about how beautiful that cover was. That's uh, that's all I've talked about so far. Uh, the Batman comic was great. Uh, introduced some new characters at the end there. Um, it's really – it's set up more for what's going on in Gotham. Uh, Batman uh, was was flying a plane – <laughs> he was flying a plane. It wasn't the bat jet. Yeah. It, well, he was fly. He basically turned a plane that was crashing into a bat jet. Because it started out as like, oh well, there's a guy with a giant missile that we're still looking for. Ba boom! You, plane you, fall. You can straight so. up tell that I haven't read this issue yet, man. I, as soon as I got Titans, that was what I was reading. I was like, Titans, go, <laughs> Team Titans. And I was reading all of these things, and I really liked the Batman one. That was a really fun comic. Um it was also kind of heartwarming at the end because, you know, Batman at one point thinks he's going to die. Spoilers. And um, he uh, he starts, like, telling Alfred, like, yeah, you know, if I die, I got videos for all of my, you know, all the guys. Uh, this is the code. And he's like, and, you know, he's like, do you think my parents would be proud of me? And Alfred's just sitting there and he's like, yep, you're totally cool to die, but I don't think you're going to. Just like all the other times you thought you were going to die and you you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I'm stable, activate both jets at 100%. Yes, sir, awaiting your stability. As always! You can, you can straight up tell that I'm not going to be the guy that records the CDs for the truckers to listen to. So if they <laughs> they have any audio and they're like, Hey, I got this new infamous, 
Crisis CDs to listen to on my truck drive. Well, there you go, they're doing it. Uh, comic book jerk is talking like this all the time, and uh, hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, but it was really heartwarming for me and Brandon, too, like when he called Robin, all the Robins, the boys. You know, he's like, I got the, the files ready for the boys. And then uh, you think he's going to die, and then right at the end, again, spoilers, two new characters pop up and save him. Who are Gotham these guys? Girl and Gotham guy. Gotham girl and Gotham guy. Now, are you sure these these aren't? This isn't Owl Man, and then the other chick that was dating Blue Manhattan guy. Dude, they can fly. I don't know who the hell they are. Well, I mean, they like. I mean, if you think about it, they could have Legion rings. Maybe they they are part of the multiverse, and they got Legion rings, or I don't know. I don't see any rings on them. But here's, no, the, here's I, I don't know. Maybe these are another Earth Supergirl and Superman. Who decided? You know what? We're gonna save Gotham. I don't know. These guys got me interested, though. I really am excited. Maybe to see they could be part of the play. court of Owls. And also, coming in and saying Gotham is our city is probably going to get Batman really pissed because you know he says it right in one of the comics. They're like, you know, super. You know, all the other League members are are busy. You know, fighting in space or fighting monsters. He's like, it's fine. This is my city, anyways. I don't need them. Which he doesn't, but I mean, he probably would have been screwed if it not hadn't been for their help. I don't know. It's Batman. I don't yep. think you can kill Batman. Yeah, Batman's <laughs> always throwing fits, man. He's he's always like, in my city. Get out of my city. Get out theory, of my city. Uh, theory from Brandon, Gotham and Gotham Girl are definitely low key villains. That's actually a pretty good theory. I like that. I mean, I well, I mean, that's that's it. pretty odd. I mean, it's, it'd be kind of like a dead shot, you know, uh, when he first showed up. He's like, "I'm gonna be a hero," and then he's like, "But I'm actually doing this so I can knock Batman and the Robins off of their pedestal." So, I actually really like that. That or maybe perhaps punch him in the dick. I mean, I was just so, like, overshadowed by the fact that they saved Batman that I didn't think to think maybe they're actually uh, bad guys, so... You really never thought about that? Like, that's... That's the old Look, one, dude, too. I mean, I was overwhelmed with emotion. Batman was, like, was like basically saying his last rights to him, and I'm like, yeah, they saved him! They saved everyone! I'm like, cool! And then I'm like, I didn't think that, okay? I'm caught in the emotions, man. And also, I had like three other comics I really wanted to get to, and I was still overwhelmed yeah. from Goldie dying. Okay, so <laughs> all right, let's skip, let's skip the death of Kitty Cats and go into your next next pick for for rebirth. What was what was the next one? Green Lanterns issue one. This one was a really good one, so I, I like. I thought Green Lantern Hal Jordan was coming out. Was that last week or is that uh, this week? Oh, that's uh, I think that's coming out either next week or week after. That, but um, that right now sucks. this is Green Lantern's issue one. I really like this comic. Like Green Lanterns, I didn't think I would like it as much. Um, Brandon says packed with too much. I can agree that it was. It felt a little bit rushed for what yeah. it was. But, I mean, when you've got two characters who are basically partners now... You could tell I'm not gonna... on the ball with my comic books this week. Usually I'd right have now, all these... <laughs> the only thing right I've now, read this week was Titans. What the... Go ahead. How Just... George Jill July? Thanks, Brandon. Um, but uh, the Green Lanterns, I mean, they're partners now, and I think that's really fun to see their partnership because they're both rookies in the Green Lanterns, and they're reminded of that a few times. Um, but, you know, they're both trying to learn not only how to, you know, work as Green Lanterns, but, you know, work as partners, and... Now, it's tell, still tell me this, um, does, does this continue from where it left off last week, where, uh, Hal Jordan basically said you have one lantern between the two of you, and you have to use it together? They're still partners, yes, and they're, um, and Hal's in space somewhere, so they're the only lanterns on Earth, which leaves the... This plan they uncover with the Red Lanterns, um, you know, the Red Lanterns are basically going to be the bad guys, and they're trying to take over, <laughs> take over Earth uh, again because their their plan is basically 
take out these two amateur Green Lanterns and Earth is ours for the taking because they're the only things that can stand. And uh, I was talking with Brandon earlier who he also put in his comments here. I don't think that the Red Lanterns should have been villains of the first story arc. I personally would have put it in a smaller villain to build the partnership up a little bit, which uh, that makes a lot of sense. I now, think that they're they're trying to introduce this Red Dawn really quick. Is it is it a little bit too gory though? Like it seems like a little bit too gory <laughs> for a freaking Green Lantern comic. Like what? Uh, what? I the don't think. Fudge? Is it is this still going by the comics code? <laughs> oh, that's pretty graphic, dude. That's, that's I a- mean. I- Go to the next panel where there's like a bunch of bodies sitting in the cave. Uh, no some of way. the things I don't left me having questions. Oh. There you go. <laughs> the oh, some the new Green Lantern is now the inter interstellar version of the Walking Dead. Like it's it's totally reached a new inter interdimensional rift here with with the whole dead bodies in a different dimension. Wait, is it? Is this on Earth, or is it a different dimension? It's on Earth. It's on Earth. And Amanda Waller is still kind of... Uh, Amanda Waller is uh, still pulling her hole where the federal agents and where the boss card. Uh, go over maybe two pages, one or two, where she interacts with them. And... Right mm, there it is. Federal government. Yep. You know, she's, she's laying down the law. She's putting the smacketh down on all them hosts. But, uh, what Brandon's trying to say here is they're uh, try they're uh, using a huge event to force the two of them to work together, and there's bringing drama between the two of them and stuff. I mean, they both are kind of still butting heads a lot, and I agree that I think that maybe smaller villains that they could have took out first together to build some trust would work. But at the yeah. same time, I mean, there's a lot of you know I think using these big villains can be a way to really push them together and uh it's also pushing some boundaries because i mean they don't know apparently you know who to trust with these this rage uh spikes happening that's causing all these people to go like feral when they suddenly get angry there's some kind of hell tower that's causing everyone to turn into raging zombie hordes and apparently um one of the lanterns so, has so are, this are these too. these raging zombie hordes that only Scooby Doo can take care of? I'm not even going to answer that one. <laughs> only Scooby Doo can stop them. Scooby Dooby Doo. <laughs> I had yeah, to. But... I had to. Man, nobody's. <laughs> Nobody has even read that book. Like, I want to know where the hell Scooby Doo Apocalypse is sitting right now. <laughs> on the, uh, the best fully stocked at local comic shop. Do not worry, there's still a first printing there if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> but, just... uh, yeah, it's set up a lot for the Red Lanterns. There's going to be some kind of. It's basically like Red Dawn. Basically, their goal is to eliminate the re- the only Green Lantern standing in their way. And they can take over. There's also just, but these still the Green Lanterns introduced a lot of. Um, they're still talking about the spectrums of light, and there was an issue in issue Rebirth of uh, Green Lanterns where there's this box that apparently had some kind of yeah. light force or power in it that's still alluded to a little bit that I'm still wanting answers to, and I, I think that'll be covered more in the Hal Jordan Green Lantern probably. Well, I've so. got I've got something that I want more answers to, and it happens to be this. What exactly is going on here? Ollie's getting it again. I loved this Green Arrow just because Green Arrow and Black Canary are back. Like they are back to the Green Arrow and Black Canary that I I know and love um, personally. I think that you know the New Fifty Two Green Arrow was fun ish i mean he was kind of like you know hawkeye style like i'm tr- being a little show offy just to prove i can but this green arrow is great i think that uh i like the the turn they're taking and i like the relationship that's being built between black canary and green arrow again and i think that getting back to their roots is what they really needed to make these characters successful again there they are yeah that's that's the image that that i love what them basically just standing side by side with each other? I thought it would be them them waking up in the bed together or something, man. Like, 
Like, getting it on. Listen to Marvin Gaye. Just like, let's get it on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's kind of weird, though, because you see later in the issue, you know, she even still doesn't know if there is this is a relationship, if this is a fling. She doesn't, you know, she puts a good point, though. This Oliver Queen is still trying to use his money as a justification of, well, if I'm putting all this money back in the town, then I'm doing good, which he's doing something that Bruce Wayne never really did besides, you know, a few hospitals and stuff, yeah. which I've always kind of made fun of. Like, well, Batman has all this money. Why doesn't he just give this super awesome bat tech to the police? Yeah. And well, I believe, but, but, I mean, it's like... They'll just steal it and make Jim Gordon Batman if they did that. Why would you... Was, but like, that would ever happen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's going back to the first Rebirth issue... Where um, <laughs> bring back the Neil Adams hat instead of the hood. I like the hood, personally. I'm a little biased because I I did the hooded Green Arrow costume, but I mean I like this Green Arrow personally. I st- I like that they brought the uh, the goatee back for sure though. The goatee does it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think I, that this I'm is, not a fan of the goatee. I, I like it's the stubble. Back to the, the conspiracy too that was being uncovered in Rebirth with there's a group that's you know traffic using human trafficking through um through the city yeah and he's trying to uncover who's doing it and I knew who was the bad guy as soon as he showed up and then the ending though got me really confused and pissed because apparently he's got a sister in this um in this comic that you know he's taking care of he doesn't really know the mother but he knows that his dad apparently had a, a another daughter that's a lot younger than him dude but dude dude I, t- I totally found out who who black canary and oliver queen have a kid together dude they they totally do in the, in rebirth have you seen this yet it's fucking shaggy, dude. Scooby dooby doo. Where are you? We got some work to do now. Now, see, the the premise of the new Scooby Doo is the fact that that Oliver Queen has had a kid in in the years, and he's totally embarrassed by his his hipster, um, big gauged eared son who does nothing but sit around and vape and uh, have the munchies with, with, with his dog all the time, which he's genetically enhanced with the help of Cyborg from the Justice League, dude. Now, this is this has got to be the, one of the best comics of the year, dude. Scooby-Doo Apocalypse comes with, with not, only, not only Scooby-Doo, but also Robin Daphne, dude. If you haven't seen Robin Daphne, dude, then you have lost it, dude. She is not only part of Spiral, but then she's also, also got... Oliver Scooby Doo, I'm done. I, apparently, you're not getting any humor out of this whatsoever. <laughs> oh no, no, no! I am getting plenty. You got to admit of humor from this. You, you have got to admit that looks like Oliver Queen's son right there. <laughs> for, you threw me for such a curveball with this. I basically want to go and be the only person who's probably purchased that comic in Richmond to read this now, just because you you said that. <laughs> I'm, tell, I'm telling you what they need. If they were going to reboot Scooby Doo like like they just did, they needed to let me reboot it as as Shaggy Queen, dude. Shaggy Queen. I don't know if you've seen Shaggy Queen, but no, it's it's not. Not some lady in drag. It is the hipster version. Zoinks! We gotta stop the bad guy, dude. <laughs> Zoinks! My daddy's got Zoinks. millions and billions of dollars, but I'm sitting here with a dog getting high, smoking the vape. <laughs> you know, honestly though, this this Oliver Queen doesn't seem like uh, he's uh, he's too afraid of throwing his money around. And uh, you know, he pays like some cops to be to keep him in the loop, and some of the the. You know, I think that's what uh, Black Canary really didn't like too. Yeah. Was uh, and you know one of the the good questions she brought up is like, who in your life besides your own sister is in your life that you haven't paid? When you did know, they, and, when did they yeah. start actually throwing his sister into the comics though? Because I'm not a they, this comic this issue is when they really mentioned her. You know, she she shows up at one of the scenes, the fight scenes, and it's just 
slinging arrows. Apparently, she's really good at that, and she's trained by a, a ninja, I guess. So she, uh, I mean, they really just started building that relationship there, and you know, talking like, you know, I raised, you know, I've just met her a year ago, but we're starting to make up for lost time, and um, I, you know, J- Oliver's genuine in this, and I like it, but he's also got this side of him that's pretty clueless to everything else that's going on around him, and I think that's, that's why I really like having millionaires, uh, right? <laughs> That's what I think I like having Black Canary with him most is because she levels him a lot on like and makes him really yeah. like, you know, he he has an answer for everything. He has a justification for everything he does. And I think that she kind of is there to take a step and say, maybe you should look at this in a different way. All right, so. here, here's my serious question about Green Arrow, though, like as far as this issue goes. Does the Black Canary have to know anything about his son, Shaggy Queen? <laughs> hey, maybe that's where where Crypto is. He's actually uh, related to Scooby. Dude, that makes perfect sense right there, dude. That is exactly. We just made a whole DC. We just made a whole DC tie-in. Freaking and mind blown. Comes, is just a distant cousin of Oracle. That that's exactly right. That that is exactly what's going on, dude. And look, those are the same villains that they found dead in that pit that the Green Lanterns found. Like, check it out. Right down there in the bottom left corner. Those are the same people that they found in that Green Lantern issue that were dead. So there's definitely a tie-in involved in here. We Dude, there's a whole this is the we just solved the yeah. whole DC rebirth like That is exactly right. It has like, nothing to do with the Watchmen people. It has nothing to do with the Watchmen. If you it are, has all are, Scooby Doo. That's it's all Scooby Apocalypse. If you check out issue two, it it ties in more with rebirth than anything. <laughs> What? What? So, we need to draw out this fan theory. Like, I just want this to. We need to dedicate a whole like portion of an episode every time to just tie it into what's going on. Like, if you if you look at this Shaggy Queen right here, dude. Like, this is the first time I've ever seen Shaggy with gauges in his ears. Like, he is totally hundred percent hipster, dude. He's even got the button up shirt. The only thing that's missing is the fact that that he doesn't have Scooby back there like vaping, like Scooby snacks. Scooby Nacks, for this this issue of Scooby Apocalypse, needs to have them getting, like, bottles of vaping juice to be their, their no, Scooby no, no, Snacks. No, no, no. Scooby Snacks are filled with, they're just, they're just doggy edibles, you know, and where it's legal in Colorado now. Uh, yeah, that that is true, man. They they could actually be be sitting around. That's why Shaggy likes it so much. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely Shaggy do right there. Straight up Shaggy. Shaggy do <laughs> it's a cross, like like basically. Do for injustice. No no no. Basi- basically, <laughs> like here's my theory of it. Scooby is actually Shaggy, but Shaggy's got like some kind of device implanted in his brain where he also controls Scooby too. So it's basically Shaggy do, but he's also Shaggy Queen. Exactly. Shaggy Queen. That's exactly what I was getting to. I think that wraps. I think that wraps up this week on the comic book jerk show. So I can't believe that we was a, managed to make it actually work after the fifth time around trying to get it. So hopefully the next cover, stream... next week we'll cover where's Scrappy Doo <laughs> and uh, where's Scrappy Doo <laughs> and uh, you know how they're going to tie into Injustice as well. I like that. That's yeah. that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we're definitely going to be be following the Scooby Apocalypse from now on because we definitely want to know what happens in Rebirth because there's definitely no Watchmen Rebirth happening. In- You're going to have to pay to read those because I'm not. So <laughs> no, well, I mean, I'll buy anything that has comic book logos on it. I'll, I've I've got months, months, and months of Marvel stuff that I still haven't read because I'm still stuck on the DC land. So I'm good to go. I'm good on Thanks. comic books. Anytime you want to bring out. Shaggy Queen, we can't. But anyways, what what time is it, dude? What time is it? It's time to to put to put that little plug in for a big old box of stuff. That's right. The comic book jerk show is brought to you by big old box of stuff. You gotta do better than that. Let's let's take let's take it back in. The comic book jerk show is brought to you by big old box of stuff. And snappal.com. And it is that time for you to put the kids in bed, get ready to go to sleep, and what, o- what other time is it, Justin? It's time to kick that music. 
That's right. And just remember, the following broadcast should follow the provisions of Section 106 and 106A. The fair use of copyrighted work, including such use as reproduction and copies and pre-orders and all that blah blah blah. Yeah, you get it. You read it. Basically, we didn't pay for this stuff. You know, in the podcast, we kind of talk over the credits, so I think it, I think it's legit here. It's it pretty legit. I, uh, you know, if any of you are watching, you know, I'm I hope you enjoyed this show. This actually worked really well. Yeah, I think the fifth time trying to do it. <laughs> hey, man, if we set up, start setting up like an hour and a half earlier then maybe we can start doing this at an appropriate time. Yeah, but we definitely... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to pick. Maybe maybe the comments will tell us. Tell us next week, guys. Have a great night. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>